Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic, here with another new Philosophy Friday series. All month this month, we're going to be doing what I call the Color Theory Series, where we look at the five colors of magic and break down their strengths and weaknesses and how they fit into the format of Commander. If you want to pick up any of the cards we talk about today and help support the channel, check out our affiliate, Harry Tarantula, for all of your cards and gaming supplies. Remember, use our code CMDR space mechanic at checkout to help support the channel. And stay tuned. This season of Philosophy Friday will be critical to our next big giveaway. Keep those eyes peeled. This week, we're looking at one of the most versatile colors in magic, blue. There's no denying that many feel blue is the strongest of all colors in magic because of its jack of all trades abilities. From being the only color to get counter magic, stopping spells before they happen, and denying opponents valuable resources. So let's explore what blue's strengths and weaknesses are. Blue's defining traits are knowledge, trickery, and cunning. So Blue's creatures are more likely to be small and evasive, provide some kind of card resource-based utility, be a wise sphinx, powerful wizard, or a massive sea creature. But in all cases, you'll find Blue's creatures deal with cards as a resource. Blue is one of the best colors for flying and unblockable creatures, like fairies or rogues. They also top out their curve with big flyers or tricky to pin down sea creatures, giving them some real threats the longer the game is allowed to proceed. But Blue's really powerful creatures are the unassuming ones that gain advantage via cards as a resource, be it an Archaeomancer returning spells, Jace's Archivist allowing you to wheel every turn, or Spellseeker letting you tutor a small spell to your hand. While blue has versatility in creatures, they really aren't the color's strengths. Blue doesn't have a lot of great removal options for permanence. Most of blue's removal is bounce-based, only temporarily dealing with a problem on board. That's not to say blue can't deal with creatures permanently, but if blue's going to destroy something, they're more likely to turn it into something else, as seen with cards like Pongify rapid hybridization, or reality shift. Blue's board wipes are all bounce-based as well, but on a massive scale. This can be conditional bounce with a whelming wing, mass symmetrical bounce with an evacuation, or the strongest removal in our format, asymmetrical bounce via cyclonic rift. Being able to set only your opponent's back at instant speed is incredibly powerful. But Blue's real removal is counter magic. That is, removing a spell while it's being cast. From the classic counter spell, to rewind, to force of will, Blue is known for what's called permission. That is, granting your opponents permission to have their spells. While its power is diminished in a multiplayer format, where your resources can seldom match three sources of threats, a well-timed counterspell can sink an opponent's entire game. This is one of Blue's true strengths. Blue's protection abilities come in the form of hexproof, shroud, or blink effects. If Blue wants to ensure its own safety, they make their creatures tricky and wily by not being where you think they were. This includes effects like giving yourself, as the player, Hexproof 2, ensuring that any spells targeting you miss. But as mentioned previously, Blue's protection comes from ensuring a harmful spell never resolves in the first place. No better way to protect yourself from danger than not allowing your opponent to even cast the spell. Ramp is Blue's one true weakness and is nowhere near as prevalent in this color. Blue really needs the assistance of other colors or artifacts in order to generate more mana. 
there are some small effects like retrace that would allow you to put an additional island into play, but otherwise Blue needs to consistently play lands in order to stay on curve. Fortunately, it looks like this is one area where Blue's never really going to shine, giving it at least one glaring weakness. But shoring up these deficiencies with strong artifact ramp is your best bet. And if you're not going to rely on colors like black, green, or red to really help you ramp. Many people say blue does everything, but this shows that no color can really have it all. However, blue's primary strength is in card draw and card advantage. No other color gets as unconditional draw as blue does. By unconditional, I mean with no extra cost and not dependent on anything else. Cards like Ancestral Recall are the oldest and most broken examples of this strength from blue. But even cards like Asami, Lady of Scrolls, or Chemister's Insight show us that blue is on the throne when it comes to card advantage. And this is evident everywhere, from cantrips like Ponder, to creatures like Arcanus the Omnipotent, to one of the best cards in our format, Ristic Study. It shows that blue has card draw at its very core. And card draw, card advantage, is one of the cornerstones of our format. You can't run out of gas in this format, not when you have three opponents to stave off. And when your removal is typically one for one, you need to make sure you have a full grip. In this regard, it's like blue naturally synergizes with itself, allowing it to be perceived as one of the strongest and most played colors in the format. So where the other colors might have some pretty glaring weaknesses, blue seems to only have one in ramp. But what are some of the other strengths to blue? Well, blue gets access to several unique effects. Let's take a look. Mill effects are some of the most prevalent. These effects continue to deny resources from players before they have access to them. Cards like Traumatize, Sphinx's Tutelage, or Hedron Crab are all examples of ways blue can fill up yards and make sure players can't get to key cards. While plenty of players like these effects, remember that it's significantly harder to win via milling an opponent than it is through other means. You need to mill 99 cards from three opponents each to win. But there is a big difference between trying to mill your opponents and trying to mill yourself. Blue has the unique effect of being able to win rather than lose by having an empty library. Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, Laboratory Maniac, and Thassa's Oracle all have the rare you win the game clause on them for having no cards in your library. And in our format, this is often exploited, especially at higher power levels, because this is a win condition that takes your opponent out of the equation entirely. Yet another unique blue effect, as if it didn't have enough, is that blue gets to take extra turns. No other color gets this ability regularly but you could easily fill 25% of your deck just with extra turn cards. And these effects are busted, of course, especially in our format. Taking one extra turn with Blue's card advantage resources puts you miles ahead of opponents and breaks core game parity. Blue's tutors are great as well, with the ability to grab spells with a mystical tutor or merchant scroll to the ability to grab artifacts with cards like Fabricate, Trinket Mage, or War of Invention. Blue doesn't just have to rely on raw card draw to gain advantage. It can grab specific cards, which helps it be a very strong color for enabling combos. Lastly, Blue shares some of White's stacks effects, in some cases having straight redundant versions of the same cards. Arcane Laboratory came first but was eventually shifted to white in Rule of Law. Propaganda was the original Pillow Fort effect, 
but was eventually shifted to white in Ghostly Prison. You can see where, over time, the effect has shifted out of blue and into another color. But in our format, where we have access to the entire card pool of Magic's history, this means there is still a significant overlap in ability between these two colors. Blue's design is about expanding ability, mental capacity, and being tricky. But it's not about physical strength or aptitude. So creatures, while evasive, have lower power and or toughness, and are less likely to want to block in combat. Blue relies heavily on other colors for bodies, paired with green or red specifically to help cover some defenses and provide a good aggressive front as well. Blue uses artifacts in the form of inventions or archeological finds to help bolster its mana capabilities. This is another area where Blue looks to find strong partners in mana generation. Green's ramp effects, or rituals from red and black, along with Blue's card advantage, create excellent inherent synergies. Let me know in the comments below where you feel Blue's biggest strengths are and how you hope to see Blue's color identity grow and expand in the future. We'll see how that plays into our deck building together here on the channel. And until next time, folks, as always, good luck and have fun.